Last year I went through a phase of playing around with fire and fire related things and this is what I ended up with. It's not particularly glamorous or doesn't do anything hugely impressive but it's not an area I had ever really spent any time with or doing anything with and so I was quite pleased in terms of what I achieved. So this thing consists of a few key parts. The start is the gas tank. This is where all the gas comes from. I'm using these little kind of disposable, I think butane, propane tanks. Really, really cheap, meant to be popped into like disposable barbecues. And to interface that, I'm using a little adapter thing I made. Um, there is a separate video about that, but it, despite looking pretty horrendous, it works very well. And that converts the gas tank into a quarter inch BSP thread. That then runs through the valve into a buffer tank. This is an old welding gas tank which has been kind of cleaned out and a proper kind of useful thread put into it. And that then runs through to pressure gauge, so I can see where we are, around the bend and into a solenoid. This is a controlled valve which just lets through little bits and bits of gas. And then on the way up the kind of tube, we've got a spark generator and then that sits at the top there. So when the system gets triggered, it will release some gas and generate a spark and you get fire. This contraption is all about releasing a large quantity of gas in one go to get a big fireball. But these smaller tanks just aren't designed to do that. They're meant for a small, slow, controlled release of a gas, which is why you need a buffer tank when you're doing something like this. This allows the tank to kind of fill up and then it so when the valve opens, it can discharge rapidly and quickly through the system while slowly filling up again from the other tank. I mean, in practice, the way I've been using it is I fill the tank a little bit, then seal the valve, then play around with it. So that means when I'm working here, there is no live connection to the tank. The tank can even be removed. To control everything, I'm using an Arduino Uno. This provides the timing signals to kind of trigger the gas and the spark ignition. The, everything's kind of interfaced through this kind of dual relay board. And the relay board will then kind of provide the, the roughly 12 volts needed for the spark igniter and the valve. The toughest part of all of this was the spark generator. It's using a, a kind of off the shelf spark generator here from eBay. They're really cheap, easy to obtain, easy to use. But the problem I found was mounting it on top of the copper tube. The sparks, the electricity wants to kind of jump and find the shortest route to ground. So if you try and mount these directly to the side of the copper pipe, they're just going to spark to the copper pipe, loop around to the other side and out the other wire. And it won't generate a spark of any usable nature. And so after trying out a variety of different things, this kind of ugly monstrosity was the best kind of method I came up with. It's designed to keep the, um, the kind of base end of the screws as far away as possible so that when you look at the whole system, the shortest path to ground or to, to kind of cross the gap is from the tip here. And so that means that the electricity goes in both ends. It's some way from the copper pipes. So it doesn't want to jump there. It wants to travel and you'll find it'll spark from there to there or there to the copper pipe and back up again. Either way, it's in the path of the gas and works perfectly. So there you have it. A really straightforward, simple little system. Um, not going to do any more on it beyond this. Um, it's kind of an interest that kind of came and went. So for now, I'm happy with this as a, a conclusion to my kind of messing around.